Good morning from Gideon Springs in Israel. We are here where one of the Old Testament's, um, really a test of faith for Gideon happened right here. And so I wanna start us out with giving us the scriptural background for the story we're about to, to hear. So I'm in Judges 6, starting at verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, while the son of Gideon was beating out the wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do I not send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am at the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, but I will be with you. So what did God call Gideon? Mighty man of valor. <laughs> Let me give you some background on that. Gideon is hiding because the Midianites, as Ori told us, were nomads. They would follow the Israelites and basically live off of them, be basically life suckers of their livestock, their grain, their everything. And so once again, the Midianites have shown up to cause havoc among the Israelites. And so Gideon is uh, threshing wheat in a wine press. He's hiding, because you don't thresh wheat in a wine press if you know anything. You're on the top of a hill so that when you beat it, you know, the, the shaft flows away and you're left with the grain. He's hiding in a wine press. So Gideon is already scared. He's hiding in a wine press. And that's where God sends the angel to tell him, mighty man of valor. <laughs> Do you think Gideon felt like that? No. It's interesting that phrase is the same phrase that describes David's mighty men, mighty men of valor. Imagine how confused Gideon was. Now the Midianites, you'll remember the Midianites, they've showed up several times in scripture. They were the human traffickers of Joseph when his brother sold him into slavery. Moses married a Midianite woman. So Moses' father-in-law was a Midianite. And during the last years of Moses' life, um, the Midianites led some of the Israelites astray to worship other gods. And so now here's the Midianites again wreaking havoc, uh, presenting a stumbling block. Now what I want to ask you is, how many of y'all have some Midianites in your life? They keep showing up. You know, they're, they're stumbling blocks at every step of the way. I know I see a lot of this, like we have people in our lives that are the Midianites. So how do we handle those people when the Midianites keep showing up? Yeah, she's like, love them anyway, which is a great life. But what I love about what God sends the angel to tell Gideon is you don't have to be afraid. You know, I'm calling you out. I'm already calling you brave, even though you don't feel like it. He's already given us the Holy Spirit inside of us, uh, the strength, the power that we need to defeat any enemy against us, period. That, that's what God gives us in the Holy Spirit. So Gideon says, okay, fine, but I'm gonna test you. How about the fleece? Twice. He puts the fleece out if it's dry around it and then if it's dry on it, all this kind of stuff. So when God calls you to something uncomfortable, how many of y'all decide to test God? Well, if you do this, then I'll, but, but if you do this, then I'll, you know, it's like we're bargaining with God. And that's really what that is. So Gideon tests God. And so right here at this spring, Gideon brings thousands and thousands of soldiers. And God decides to make Gideon a little more nervous, <laughs> a little more faith. And through the lapping, he dwindles the thousands of soldiers down to how many? 300. You think that's a brave you know, thing for Gideon? No, he's thinking he has thousands and it's still gonna be hard. And God says, no, no. Here's 300. Here's your posse. What I love about what God does for us is he always gives us a posse. He always gives us those around us who will be with us in the battles. 
Who's your posse? Who's your posse in life? Because we all have them and we need our posses. But what I love about Gideon Springs is this is a place of vulnerability. Three, down from thousands to 300 men, Gideon feels very vulnerable. But I love the last, the last five words of Judges 6.16, but I will be with you. And when we get in sticky situations, or every situation in our life, that is what God says to us, I'm with you. I'm not abandoning you, I'm not leaving you alone. I am with you. And so when we are at a place of vulnerability, God still promises, I am with you. When we feel weak, when we doubt, when we feel less than, when we don't feel brave, I hope you remember Gideon Springs and the place with all the snails, the thousands of snails. And I hope you remember the posse that God has given you because he never asked us to wander this path alone. He always gives us not only his son, the strength inside of us, but the posse around us to defeat the stumbling blocks that the enemy will put in front of our path. So let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much for the physical places we can come in the land of where you put your son's feet, where we can see how you worked in the lives of some people who doubted you. And Father, so when we doubt in our lives, when we doubt you, when we doubt our circumstances, when we try to get through things in our own strength, Father, I pray that you bring Gideon to mind, that vulnerable feeling of not enough, of weakness, of doubting, that we remember those words that you promise Joseph, that you promised Gideon, that you promise us, that I will be with you. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen.